thank you for joining us today on this Euro PCR discussion on the Prevail Drug Code of Balloon. I'm Azim Latif from New York, and I'm lucky today to be joined by my mentor and good friend, Antonio Colombo from Milano. Today we'll be discussing drug code of balloons and more specifically the Prevail Drug Code of Balloon. And I'd like to start with a quick recap of the Prevail study so you can understand uh, really what the data is for this balloon. So the, the Prevail balloon, Drug Code of Balloon is a new balloon, Drug Code of Balloon for Medtronic that maximizes the technology that we all know that has been used in Medtronic Drug Code of Balloons. So the free pack coating. The balloon has paclitaxel at a density of 3.5 micrograms per millimeter squared, um, which is facilitated by biocompatible urea excipitant, which leads to rapid absorption. There's really uniform drug content throughout the balloon due to the drug coating that happens before balloon wrap. We have a lot of data of both on this coating and, and this drug, but what's different with Prevail is that the coating and drug that we have all this clinical data on has now been placed onto the Euphora semi-compliant balloon which makes this balloon extremely deliverable, um, even in complex lesions. So we performed the PREVAIL study, which was a prospective single arm multicenter study performed in Europe, in which we enrolled lesions that were two to four millimeters in diameter and less than 25 millimeters in, the, in length that were either de novo or instant restenosis lesions. The study was performed in 10 sites in Europe and Asia Pacific, with the primary endpoint of instant or in-balloon late lumen loss at six months and secondary endpoints that included death, target vessel MI, revascularization, stent thrombosis, TLF, and TVF. We enrolled 50 patients at these sites. And really, this is the main result. If you look to the primary endpoint in all patients, the late loss was 0.05 with a large standard deviation of 0.44. In de novo lesions, and we've seen this in many drug code of balloon studies, that when you lose late loss, you may often get a negative late loss in de novo lesions. And then in the 28 restenotic lesions, a low late loss of 0.12. When you look at clinical outcomes, both at six months and 12 months, you see really that event rates were extremely low. There were no cases of target vessel MI, stent thrombosis, or cardiac death. The only events were three clinically di driven target lesion revascularizations at 12 months and a total of five TVRs at 12 months. When you divided this up by de novo and instant restenosis lesions, you see that these three TLRs, one was in the de novo and two were in the restenotic lesions. So Antonio, this is the Prevail study. I don't think you've really seen this data a lot. And um, the study really confirms, I think, what we know of Impact Falcon and um, that this drug coating on a, and, and paclitaxel on a drug is safe and efficacious. Any comments on the study? But I think, uh, uh, thank you, first of all, for having me with, uh, with you people and with Azim. Uh, it's important to distinguish between instant stenosis and native lesions. Uh, instant restenosis is a particular model because uh, uh, keep in mind that you will not benefit from positive remodeling. So what you leave at the best is what you will find. So in instant restenosis, lesion preparation is key and essential. You will not use a drug coated balloon unless your pre-dilatation result is evaluated as optimal. In a native, it's maybe a little bit different because with native, you may take advantage of positive remodeling and the drug on the balloon may facilitate positive remodeling. So I think this concept has to be clear from the beginning. Uh, if these uh, are, if this is uh, followed in the right way, then you will have uh, good results and you can extend the result of the prevail uh, to your practice. But you have to be willing 
to disregard some lesions where lesion preparation fails to achieve a good result. Antonio, you, hi- you highlight a really important point that I think, you know, even us, me and you, we started, we've been using drug coated balloons for many years from the beginning, and we only learned that after a long time, right? It's the fact that I think there are two important points for me that you, you highlight, and I think I've learned from our experience. The one is not all drug coated balloons are equal. Okay, so you really need to know about the balloon, the drug, and the excipient. But also, once you have a drug coated balloon, the drug coated balloon only serves to deliver drug. And so, if you want to have a good result with a drug coated balloon, just as important as the balloon you choose is how you prepare the lesion beforehand for the drug and for the balloon when you deliver the drug. And I think, you know, it's, it's important now as this technology spreads out, it's also coming here to the United States in the future, hopefully, um, but as more people use drug coated balloons, they remember both of these important points. The second part I think is really important, what you mentioned about lesion preparation, having a good result. How do you define that? What is a good result that you say, okay, now I'm, I can use a drug coated balloon? Uh, you will um, you will never have uh, you will rarely have a stent like result, but uh, you really have, uh, especially with uh, in stent restenosis, uh, you must have an optimal result, and that means uh, you have to be open to use uh, kind of atherectomy devices. Uh, you, if you have an orbital atherectomy. No reason not to use orbital atherectomy to prepare the lesion. Cutting balloon, angiosculpt, take the hyperplasia away as much as you can. Uh, dilate the stent if it's underdeployed at the appropriate size. But if the stent is well deployed and you have all hyperplasia causing restenosis, you need to get rid of the tissue if you can. So uh, consolidate the immediate result with the drug, but uh, if you do not have an immediate result, which is good, don't give the drug because the drug is not magic. Uh, The drug consolidates the result. And uh, to answer your question, what is uh, a stand-like result sometimes you get? but uh, is an optimal result, residual stenosis less than 20%, really a nice result. You may have a small dissection, sometimes even in standard stenosis you can have, but if the dissection is extra luminal, is linear, there's no luminal uh, compromise, that's okay. Uh, Don't be over concerned about small, tiny dissections. Antonio, I completely agree. I mean, that's kind of my practice too. I make sure I'm very aggressive with treating restenosis with everything I need on the shelf, whether that be laser, atherectomy, um, speciality balloons before opening um, my drug coated balloon. And I think that may be also explain why, if you look at some of the data, the randomized data of comparing a drug coated balloon to a second generation Evarolimus eluding stent, the results are not always the same. I think a stent can be more forgiving in a sense that if it's just intimal hyperplasia, you know, you squash that intimal hyperplasia, you get rid of it with the, with the second stent. But with a drug coated balloon, you really need to remove as much of the hyperplasia with your other devices beforehand. Antonio, you've been using paclitaxel drug coated balloons for many years. Um, and we both of us are very familiar with the Impact Falcon. We've, you know, we've used it for many years. Um, we have patients who now are doing extremely well years later. Um, over the last sort of year or two, there's been some concerns about the safety of paclitaxel and drug coated balloons. And people are saying we should move to Lemus because of these safety issues. Um, are you concerned about paclitaxel in coronaries? No, I, I mean, uh, you know, this debate about safety may take a full seminar, uh, but uh, I, the bottom line is, is in the last couple of years, 
this issue has been de-emphasized. And uh, even, even if there is any small truth in this debate favoring Limus regarding safety, let's leave the effectiveness on the side, but about safety, I think the dose you give when you're treating coronaries is so negligible compared to the dose you give when treating peripheral vessels that the debate is over from the very beginning. Yeah, and I agree. We did, if you remember, the Bellows study, which was a randomized study uh, with the same um, balloon um, do, you know, technology as in the drug and the excipient, Paclitex, so this, uh, the impact, fan, impact Falcon balloon from Medtronic. And we did this large randomized study in small vessels. And we published the three-year data as well, if you remember. And the three-year data really shows no difference, actually shows better outcomes and a signal towards better outcomes with Paclitaxel when it's on a balloon versus a stent. You know, and similarly, we've now put all the, the data together from most of the Paclitaxel eluting drug coated balloon studies for coronaries and published a meta-analysis in Jack, again, showing that there's really no signal whatsoever for a mortality um, or for harm from drug coated balloons in the coronary. So I feel pretty safe about that. I agree with you. I think when it comes to efficacy, we don't know yet. Um, there are now Cialimus coated balloons becoming available, particularly in Europe, even here in the United States and in, in clinical studies. But until we see head to head studies in the future, I don't think it's possible to comment on efficacy. Here's a patient, we, we, before I show you the result, that we treated in the context of the Prevail clinical study, who really had a, you know, this, this small vessel lesion of the diagonal, but that almost extends all the way to the ostium, yeah. right, where it becomes a 001 bifurcation lesion. <clears throat> and it's the kind of lesion where, you know, I think it's an important diagonal, if you agree, um, sufficient size, but where to completely cover this lesion, you may have to bring your stent into the protruding a little bit into the main branch, which is here the LAD, or even some people now, you know, may decide to cross over from the LAD to the diagonal. I think this kind of lesion, or, you know, the lesion, the bifurcation lesion, where you put a stent in the main branch, and there's a stenosis in the side branch, that's focal is a good case for drug coated balloon. Yeah, I'll just show you the angiography and the final result of this case. And I think it also highlights what you said before is the fact that you need to get a good result. So when you put the balloon in, there are no surprises after using the drug coated balloon. So for me, in most of these cases that I treat with single with um, with de novo disease and small vessel, there's often not a change after I've put the balloon in. One of the things I've learned from you, and maybe briefly you could mention, is when using drug coated balloons in de novo disease is how to get a good result with, with ballooning. I mean, do you need to use long balloons, non-compliant balloons, long inflations? And when do you decide to switch over to a stent? But uh, I think uh, uh, when you, you are dealing with native vessels, uh, using the appropriate size balloon, uh, especially in non-compliant balloon is, uh, in my view, uh, important. Uh, so uh, to sometimes use IBUS to assist you about the appropriate size of the balloon is a very good idea. Uh, if you have access uh, to angioscalp to cutting balloon, uh, don't forget that there are studies that show that uh, after a plaque modification with these devices, you get a better drug penetration into the wall. And uh, you switch over to stents when the result uh, is not uh, optimal. Let me make a jump uh, uh, into the future. For us, it's not the future, but we are using FFR and PDPA uh, to measure the gradient before and after. And we use uh, this physiological information in addition to angiography to assist uh, uh, to make us uh, the final decision. So uh, the, remember, it's nice to have a euphora, an easy deliverable balloon, 
but Dracot balloon are not meant to dilate the lesion, are meant to deliver the drug. So don't use these balloons in the same fashion as you use regular balloons. Dracot balloons deliver the drug. They are not balloons to dilate the lesion. Antonio, I think you know that's a that's a great place to end the session with that message because I think that is probably one of the most important messages um, and takeaway messages I've learned from working with you and using drug coda balloons. Um, hopefully, we've shared today with the audience, um, you know, and informed them about this new balloon, um, the Prevail balloon, which really is new per se. Um, the platform is different, but the drug and the excipient is well known to us. There are numerous clinical studies uh, that have been published with long-term data showing the safety and efficacy of this drug excipient combination. And I think we've hopefully given people some important tips on how to use drug coated balloons, both in restenotic lesions as well as in de novo lesions. So I wanted to thank you so much, Antonio, for spending this time with me. I think this will be a very informative session for our colleagues.